Hello, uh, this is a demonstration of a prototype project called SEPTA. Uh, the purpose of the project is to provide tooling for policy authoring and uh, creation of an executable that can be deployed into a, a CAMEL um, execution environment. The uh, user interface, um, is, as I said, is a prototype, um, so uh, don't take too much notice of the, um, the layouts and stuff. The, you know, the presentation and the visual side of it can be improved. Um, so it's primarily um, aimed at uh, demonstrating the content for the moment. Um, the first page, policy administration, at the moment there's no content. Um, but the aim is that when the policies are executing, uh, this will be some kind of dashboard so that it will be receiving uh, metrics and information from the, the execution of those policies uh, to enable um, an administrator to, to see how the policies are performing um, and plus possibly change the, the deployment so that um, some of the uh, policies could be uh, deployed to more nodes maybe to, to improve the, the performance. Um, so the, the main side that's um, been uh, worked on for the prototype is the design side. So at the top level there's the concept of an organisation, so this is um, the, the intent is to um, support a multi-tenant environment, um, but the, you know, the concept of an organisation could also be used within an organisation to represent different departments. Uh, so we've just created one called um, Overlord. Um, one of the, the reasons for working on this project is because um, there's co some common requirements between the, uh, the design time and um, runtime governance um, capabilities that we have at the moment. Um, so what we want to do is see whether um, a project like this um, could, you, could be used to provide a common infrastructure uh, to support both design time and runtime governance. Um, so um, what we have here um, it, it, within the organisation um, is a list of policy groups. At the moment there's just one um, and it's related to runtime governance. Um, so what I do, um, th so the, the concept of a policy group um, is to um, define a, a set of policies um, that are interrelated in some way. So the aim is that um, these get deployed to uh, an execution environment as a group um, and that they, um, you know, these individual policies um, you know, maybe may communicating with each other, so we want to verify that they are all going to behave correctly and, and communicate with each other correctly. Okay, so if I go into this, uh, the, this runtime governance um, policy group, um, so we, um, at, at the top of most of these concepts is a description, so you know, what we do is um, do an inline edit of the, the field, so that's now, you know, updated that description. Um, there's the ability to um, export the policy group. Um, this may be restricted to certain types of users. At the moment, there's no user management or, or access restrictions. Um, but it basically allows you to export it in, um, and then be able to import it uh, at a later stage. And, and in a little while, I'll, show, I'll demonstrate being able to import um, an example. Um, and then this button is to do with building the policy group. So this is um, to do with generating the executable representation um, that could then be deployed into an executable environment. Um, and at, at the moment there's no um, sort of validation or um, testing or anything performed, but the idea would be that um, you know, as part of the build process um, there would be some validation to ensure that all the, the policies are defined correctly and that they you know, are, are compatible if they're, if they're communicating with each other. Um, but also um, allow the user to define some unit tests or integration tests um, that could then also be ex uh, performed um, before creating the, the executable version. <coughs> okay, so um, within the policy group we have a list of policies. Um, we also have a list of endpoints. Um, so these are um, endpoints that are, are predefined by p possibly an administrative type user um, and they, they represent the endpoints that the, the policies can communicate on. So if I go into this uh, the first one, so um, in terms of runtime governance, this, this um, endpoint represents a, a, a JMS, an ActiveMQ um, named activity units. Um, it has some characteristics, so um, it's a queue um, and it has this characteristic called uh, batch with retry on failure. So um, 
the, one of the aims of this uh, the policy execution environment is is to allow um, like as I said administrative users to set up these um, these endpoints and configure them and provide uh, you know performance tuning of them independent of the policies so the, the person defining the policies can just worry about you know what the policy has to do um, and in ter terms of runtime governance in particular um, one one thing I found was that you know if you just use camel on, on its own to try and process individual activity events um, it camel just can't keep up with the application that's generating those application uh, those activity events so in the same way that the um, runtime governance versions one and two um, uh, batches up events and and has a way of processing those batches so that um, it, you know only the uh, the individual events that maybe fail are then retried. Um, this same concept has been um, applied to uh, to Camel and and allows it to keep up with the activity events that need to be processed. Um, so that's one of the things this uh, the Scepter project and you know sort of adds on top of Camel is this ability to have the these um, uh, high level sort of concepts and characteristics um, in terms of communications. Um, you also can define uh, consumer or producer options. So in this case, uh, because when, when this um, endpoint is being used in a consumer context, we want to um, identify the maximum number of concurrent consumers. Um, and then the other thing to do with endpoints, um, well, it, it's also related to a number of the concepts um, within um, SEPTA, is you can define um, some Maven dependencies that are associated with a particular concept. So, so in this case, if any of the policies are using uh, this particular endpoint, then they would need to have this Maven um, depends dependency defined. So this um, is the RTGov um, activity um, um, artifact. Okay. So, um, and and then the the other endpoints are, are very similar. So in this case, it's um, has a, a Maven dependency on the analytics library. Um, Okay, so now in terms of the, the policies themselves, so um, what we define is um, there's an activity server policy. So this is basically replicating um, the the REST, or is intended to replicate the, the REST service that's provided by RTGov um, to capture activity events. So this is, um, in text form, this is the camel root that defines the uh, the REST endpoint. So if uh, as you can see here, there's a context path, um, and then a particular um, context for the uh, uh, there's the put operation here, um, and the path is activities. So this particular REST service would allow somebody to um, report some um, RTGov activity units um, in JSON format. Um, we also associated with a policy. We can also define um, some resources. So. Um, these would then could then be used by the the camel root, for example. But in in this case, um, this is defining the um, the web XML um, that's going to be used to to pr um, present that REST um, service. So that's defined here. So if you add add it needed to add any additional information in there, like security properties, for example, um, that could be done. And again, uh, some dependencies could be defined. And so now if we go into one of the others, for example, so this one is providing, um, dealing with the service definition. Um, so it's receiving events from the activity units um, endpoint. Um, the the SEPTA endpoints are prefixed by um, SEPTA. Um, but it, it doesn't mean that um, these camel routes can also use endpoints directly themselves. But the benefit of um, referencing the SEPTA endpoints is that you know, somebody else is then responsible for administering them um, and it can also make any necessary changes and performance tuning, etc. <coughs> um, and then, so this is another example, but in this case, um, it's, it's calling an MVL script, um, which is defined as a resource. So if we select on this, uh, we can then see the, the MVL script here. Um, and again, if we needed to, we can define dependencies at this uh, resource level as well. Um, so although kind of this is showing um, a policy being defined um, f firstly as a as a text representation, um, there's a number of things we can do to improve how policies are defined. Um, firstly, we could have a graphical representation as well to allow somebody to to do a drag and drop um, graphical representation 
um, of the of the route. Um, you know, be able to select from the endpoints that have been defined previously. You know, things like that. Um, we could also use a templating technique so that the policy or any of the resources that it references um, could have replaceable fields so that um, when, when a, for example, a business user wants to instantiate that template, then they, they just fill out a form um, to fill in the values for those particular fields. Um, and the other approach is that um, if the target audience is more interested in writing scripts, like Groovy scripts, for example, um, then the tooling uh, you could have a particular way of defining a policy such that um, rather than the the camel root being the primary uh, thing that's entered, instead it could be um, the Groovy script, and then you just add the extra information to um, define what the input and the output events are. Okay, so um, hopefully this has shown that you know one, what we could potentially do with Scepter is represent what is happening in, in the RTGov runtime um, as a set of policies. So um, at the moment, um, th this is basically showing um, how the policies could be defined to, to replicate what's in the, the out-of-the-box RTGov system at the moment, um, with the exception of the, there's nothing for storing the events in, in Elasticsearch. So there's, there's a bit more work to do on these particular policies to make, to make it um, identical. Um, to RTGov. The final thing to mention is that um, apart from the activity server policy, um, all of the others are replicating uh, what are defined as event processor networks in the current version of RTGov. Um, so one approach to migrate from the current version of RTGov to something like um, Scepter policies would be to have a, some a, a translation from the event processor network format into um, a set to policy. So there, there are ways in which to, to easily migrate. Okay, uh, next thing is to show um, a, a DTGov type policy. Um, so what we'll do is we'll uh, import a policy group. So th this policy group is related to monitoring a, a Git repository um, and as it says in the description, validate p uh, a, a pull request uh, raising a Jira bug and a Twitter notification, um, as well as closing the, um, the pull request and commenting on it if there's a, an error found. Okay, so if we go into this policy group, there's only one policy um, in here. We've defined a number of endpoints. Uh, so there's some related to Git, um, if we select on those. Um, so this is the, the actual uh, camel sort of URL. Um, and then the consumer properties, sort of providing the, the details for the Git repository. Um, there's no additional dependencies required. Um, so there's uh, different endpoints for uh, doing a Git uh, pull request close and comment. Uh, we've also got endpoints for, for Jira. Um, and again, we, we provide the details here. So it keeps these details are then kept out of the policy um, itself. Um, and finally, Twitter. So. If we go into the uh, the policy itself, um, so this one's slightly longer. Um, basically, uh, it receives a, a pull request notification, um, and then there's a choice. Um, in the first part, it's checking to see whether it's got a title of invalid, um, and if it has, um, it then sets some header properties, uh, changes the body of the, the event, so it's gonna change to a message, um, and then sends concurrently, um, it sends out, uh, a, um, a comment, uh, a notification to Twitter, and creates the Jira issue. Um, and uh, one thing I missed, uh, the, up here it closes the um, pull request first. Um, but if everything works okay, then it takes the, the otherwise path, um, where it simply just adds a comment onto the, uh, the pull request. Um, and there's no additional resources here, so everything, all the, the logic is defined in the policy itself. So although the validation is fairly simplistic here, it's just checking for the title, it could be more complicated um, and um, you, you may decide to, to break down the validation into multiple policies. So then this could be uh, more of a coordination policy. Okay, so if we go back up to here, um, so, so now we've defined our policy and we've got the policy um, group defined. Um, at this stage, um, you know, there would be some validation performed and maybe tests performed if we define some tests. Um, but um, what we're going to do is trigger off a build 
Um, the build is actually happening in the in the background. Um, so the the user interface at the moment is not updated automatically, but you know obviously that would be um, you know a simple sort of thing to do. You know, be able to provide some push notifications <coughs> to um, you know define the status of the build. Um, and at the moment, so if we if we refresh um, the the page, um, it's listed here as tags. Um, you know, it could be called anything. Could be build, and um, and this information may not even be the, it may not be the best place for it to be on on this page. It, maybe it's more to do with the policy administration page. Uh, but because this is just a, a simple prototype, um, it's just to kind of highlight what what's basically happening. So in the background, you know, the policy has been generated into an executable form. Um, it's been sent to um, a deployment um, implementation, uh, which in this case is a file system. Um, but it could be um, Artificer or it could be, you know, any other place in which you'd want to be able to deploy um, the, the camel executable in such a way that it could be managed in, and deployed into an executable environment. Um, but for the, pu for the purposes of, of the uh, prototype demo, uh, we just made it so that we can simply um, download this executable. So, what is uh, show it in the file, in the folder. Um, so what we do is we get um, a zip, which contains um, a WAR file for each of the the policies. And in in this case, we've only got the uh, the single um, policy. So, so now what I'm going to do is going to the uh, wildfly environment um, so this is the the console for this uh, server so if i deploy this war okay so that seems to have deployed okay um, so now what we're going to do um, we've set up a, a test git repository so that's here um, and in that repository, we've got a, a WSDL file. Uh, so what I'm going to do is clean the branch. Okay, and then I'm just going to make a minor change. So delete a line. And then I'm going to make the, the command invalid. Okay, so that's been pushed. Okay, so if we now go to GitHub, okay, we can see test one here. So what I'm gonna do is create a pull request. And as you can see, it's uh, been closed straight away. And if I refresh that, we can see uh, there's also a comment. Invalid pull request 19. And then if I go and look at the Twitter account, there's a there's an old one here from a previous test, but if I if I refresh. There we go. So pull request 19 failed 25 seconds ago. Um, and then finally, so here's the uh, test Jira project that we set up. Okay, so we can see there's a, a new issue here. And again, it's got the same same comment here. Okay, so um, it's a, a very simple sort of design time governance policy, uh, but it's shown how we can uh, sort of define a policy that integrates with GitHub, Jira, and Twitter. Um, obviously the, the policy decision could be more complicated, but it's, um, you know, it shows what's, what potential there is. Um, and in terms of the uh, Scepter project, hopefully um, I've conveyed the main sort of aims of you know, trying to make the, the policy as simple as possible, although it's still um, represented as a camel root at the moment, uh, but taking out uh, the, the definition of the endpoints um, and the resources and the dependencies and, and managing them separately, um, and especially with the endpoints, being able to give them characteristics. So, for example, in the runtime governance context, being able to um, employ more um, complex things like being able to do the batch retry um, and, and failure mechanism which would otherwise make the the camel root definition very complicated okay and any questions uh, just uh, send me an email at gbrown at redhat.com